What's going on YouTube? GS right here. I hope you had a pleasant Christmas. In today's video we're going to talk about a new WebKit bug that has been released and is of course compatible with iOS 12.1 and lower. This video is brought to you by Wondershare and their software PDF Element 6 which allows you to edit, create and convert PDF files on your Mac. Check the program out in the link below. So just a few hours ago this page has been made publicly available even though it's been available you know privately for the Google Project Zero since October 3rd. Now, now, of course, this has been private because the vulnerability hasn't been patched at that point. And it's only now that is available for the general public to see and of course to test the vulnerability and so on. Now, what this is, is pretty much a WebKit vulnerability and the uh, vendor in here is pretty much Apple. Even though Apple is not the only company to use WebKit, this one directly affects them. So as you can see, it's been assigned the CVE number 2018-44. For one. So if you take it and if you copy it and you go here on the about the security content of iOS 12.1.1 and of course you press Control F and of course we search in here, you can see that it's a WebKit vulnerability that has been uh, pretty much reported by Loki Hart of Google Project Zero and it says quote impact processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. So a pretty hefty bug. And this one in here can indeed be used for a jailbreak of type jailbreak me, which is pretty much a Safari based jailbreak. Now, there are important things to keep in mind in here. Just because we have a WebKit vulnerability doesn't mean we have a kernel vulnerability and that's a very important thing to have. In order to create a jailbreak that is pretty much based on a WebKit vulnerability, you still need to have a kernel vulnerability as well. The WebKit one is pretty much used to trigger the jailbreak from Safari and that would definitely be dope because in case of a Safari jailbreak, you probably know that you do not have to sign anything every seven days. You do not have to worry about getting it from App Valley or Twigbox or Ignition or whatever, you just go to Safari, you open a website, press jailbreak and you're jailbroken. Of course, a WebKit vulnerability that is properly exploited can be actually adapted to work with previous jailbreaks that use the IPA format or the you know standard application type in order to deploy their jailbreak payload. But anyways, we're talking about iOS 12 in the future. So this one in here has been patched on 12.1.1 according to Apple and therefore is compatible with 12.1, 12.0.1, 12.0 and possibly 11.4.1 and 11.4 as well because most of the times these vulnerabilities are backwards compatible. However, iOS 12.1.1, 0.1.2 and 0.1.2, the second iteration, are not compatible and these are the only versions that are currently signed. So yeah, if you're running iOS 11.12.1 or lower, do not update to the latest version. That is pretty much common sense in the jailbreak community, but in case you're new here, you should never update to the latest version. The lower you are, the better. So yeah, what this is, well, it's pretty much a WebKit vulnerability. We still need to properly exploit it in order to use it in a possible jailbreak and we can use it in a Safari based jailbreak like you know, jailbreak me, but of course we need a kernel exploit before we can do that because we cannot create a jailbreak just with this WebKit vulnerability. It's very cool and you can use it in order to pretty much mitigate the need for signing every seven days and so on, which is definitely a huge step forward, but you still need remote code execution in the kernel in order to be able to do so. Now in iOS 12.1.1, there have been quite a lot of kernel vulnerabilities patched as well. And actually one of them is by Ian Beer of Google Project Zero. Usually EM Beard's vulnerabilities are very very powerful and the previous jailbreaks that we had were created on top of his kernel vulnerabilities starting with iOS 10. So yeah, we're definitely hoping that he's going to publish his vulnerability and it's very possible that he's going to post the vulnerability publicly but as you can see here on Google Project Zero there is usually a uh, disclaimer in here which says quote this bug is subject to a 90 day disclosure deadline. After 90 days elapse or or a patch has been made broadly available, whichever is earlier, the bug report will become visible to the public. So yeah, since it's been patched in 12.1.1, at any moment now, Ian Beer can release his kernel vulnerability. And that one, if it is what I think it is, and it does provide task for PID0, which happened to be the case for all previous kernel vulnerabilities that he posted, then of course, we're going to be able to make a jailbreak on iOS 12 and iOS 11.4.x, and combining it with this WebKit vulnerability in here, we might even be able to create it on the jailbreak need type so that we
we can run it from Safari. So yeah, a very good release in here, definitely not enough for a jailbreak, but anyways, piece by piece, we're going to get there. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys, thank you for watching, I'm Geosnow, do not forget to subscribe to stay updated, and peace out.